Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Baldur's Gate 3, where last time we uh, left, or I guess we went down and we saw the um, the Emperor's old home. And we also got visited by Orin, who told us that she had um, kidnapped Lei Zhao. And then we also saved this girl here, Cora Highberry, from a um, assassin, a Baal assassin, if doppelgangers. Very impressive. We are out of short rest, so we need to be careful when we uh, continue forward. I believe this hatch probably goes into the sewers because we saw like a um, exit from the sewers to this quest. I'm gonna look around real quick, and I do just wanna. I don't know if it'll happen. I doubt it'll happen. But if it does, and uh, this episode ends up being shorter. Uh, that is because my voice is starting to uh, uh, go from all the talking I've been having to do both with my uh, job and, you know, mainly my job. I mean, I talk a lot, I guess, with this hobby of mine, too, but I'm not, you know, straining my voice at all playing this game. Except for when I get super excited, but that's fine. Alright, I don't see... Actually, no, I wasn't actually looking for the stuff, so A wooden chest here. I'm gonna steal that, steal that. Steal all y'all. Got a pouch here. A yeah, hidden pouch. I kind of like that, having shelves above your bed like that. I've never really seen that. Oh, actually, that's not true. Not a bookshelf. And not, like, directly above your bed. My parents had, like, a, um, a headrest that was, like, like a counter inside the headrest. But it was, like, back behind the, the pillows. Like, this could be dangerous, right? What if, like... I don't know, something just falls off. You didn't put it on there all the way. Not dangerous, but annoying. Could be dangerous, depending on how heavy it is, but... Still, cool. I like that. I like that. I kind of wish I had that. Anyway. Enough of that. Let's go downstairs. And let's take a look. We're still headed towards uh, Sorcerer's Sundries, right? Yep. So that's where we are headed, and that is directly south of us? Yes. So, south is that way. There it is. I remember, yeah. So, let's just head down there. I'm excited to visit this store. It was a really cool store in Boulder's Gate 1. Is anybody going to pick this up? I decided I'm not going to, like, talk to everybody. That I see. I think that might be uh, a little bit much. It seems like a lot of people here. Although this seems like something interesting is going on here. Do you mind? I'm in the middle of an interrogation. No, oh, I do mind, but I guess as you were. Hello, Steel Watcher. There's the Gazette. When the mouth speaks, the city shakes. All right there, Chief. Can I interest you in a copy of our fine, fine broadsheet? Sure, why not? Have a gander at that. Come back tomorrow if you fancy fresh news. Baldur's Mouth Gazette, 1492DR, issue 86. Let's see what we've got going on in town. Why am I glowing? What's going on there? Hmm. Oh, wow. This is cool. Edvar Needle, Editor-in-Chief. Edition 86. Trying to see what this says. Boulder's Gate... Printing and Publishing Company, established in 1339. Price 2. Merchant Guild declares magic item marked market saved by adventurers. Ritualistic murder of Duke Stelmain at Elfsong still unsolved. Postmaster Danzo Arkwright, Arkwright in trouble. What is happening to our letters? Donation drive open at the refugee camp. Give a little, help a lot. 
Pressure mounting between Baldarians and refugees. We can't risk taking spies of the Absoluden. Gortash's coronation imminent. Witness the ascension of Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate. First Archduke. Bloris Medini gives you money saving advice. Thanks. That was really cool. Not very useful, but cool. A lot of those things we kind of already solved. What's going on here? Why's everybody gathered around? Why can't I just walk that way? Oh, I thought... I guess everybody's just watching. Okay. Hey, it's Aridin. We know him. It's been a long time since we've seen him, though. Let me back in. I'll bring Laruakin out here, you tin tube. You tell Laruakin I went for his god's damn night song, and now he has to pay up. What are you looking at? Shit, it's you. You went looking for the night song after me. Please tell me you found it. I found her. Sorry, I didn't find anything. Who are you, try who are you trying to get at inside? I found the night song. Turns out it wasn't a relic, but an Asimar. That's none of your business. I found her. An Asimar? Else, if I'd known... I'd have asked for more gold. Kidnapping costs more than theft. Don't forget, I'm the one who gave you that contract. I want my cut. Um... She's in my camp. If you want to turn her in, you're going to have to take her down yourself. I haven't been paid yet. She's immortal and tough. You can forget about turning her in for a reward. She's gone. I'm not sure where to. Piss off. Um. You can forget about turning her in for a reward. Immortal, eh? Interesting. Won't be easy getting her back to the wizard. But if you don't do it, someone else will. I hope you hit her well, mate. Aridin, don't do anything foolish, my friend. Clank. You're cool looking. He Hello? Mind if I head inside? Examine the armor to discern its nature. That's a big uh, difficulty class. But I'm too smart for it. This armor is a construct animated by powerful magic. It has no soul or power of speech, but it follows the directives of its master. It feels no pain and knows no morality. It will act on behalf of its master and perish when the magic that binds it is severed. He Hello? Mind if I head inside? Good talk. A lava elemental, water elemental. Hey, it's rolling. You, what do you want? You don't look good. Yeah, what happened to your face? It's good to see you too, Roland. Roland, how are you faring with Cal and Leah without her, without them? What happened to your face? Don't worry about it. His voice catches. There's more going on here than meets the eye. Please just make your purchase and go. I don't have energy for anything else. I'm glad I said or I'm glad I said that when my face looks even worse than his. It's good to see you too. Please just make your purchase and go. I don't have energy for anything else. Okay, I'm see what's on offer. I want to speak to whoever's in charge around here. What what do you have? Be quick about it. A lovely place. 
quick spell gloves. Cantrips that cost an action cost a bonus action instead. This effect can be used once per sh short rest. Ring of Regeneration. At the beginning of your turn, the ring activates and heals you. Damn, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna buy that. Vest of Soul Rejuvenation. Diff Diffier's Rejuvenation. Whenever the wearer succeeds on a saving throw against a spell, they regain 1d4 hit points. Greater Kushigo Counter. There I can use a reaction to make an unarmed strike, so it's a monk thing. Okay. This looks like a druid thing. You gain plus one bonus to saving DC. Save spell DC. What? Bonus to spell save DC. Green bed regeneration. When starting your turn on plant growth surface or vine surface, we gain 1d4 hit points. Advantage on constitution saving throw checks. Birthright. Charisma plus two up to 22. Oh my. When you inspire an ally using Bardic Inspiration, they also regain 1d6 hit points. I gotta get Birthright. The thing that you poor sod simply cannot grasp is how effortless all this magical hooty wooty casty spellsy business is for me. Very stupid sorcerer at a Wizard Academy ball. I'm gonna buy that. Harper's Sacred Striker. Ooh, you can cast Spiritual Weapon with it. That's kind of cool. A whole bunch of spells. I think that's good for now. Yeah. We could always try to remember to put this on or change hats. That looks very wizardy, doesn't it? That's alright. It kind of looks like a mix between a wizard and like a bard hat. I like it. Doesn't really, f like, fit, though. We're just gonna hide it for now. As for the ring... What's next? Mm, more concentrating. What does Radiating Orb do again? Minus one to attack rolls. That's pretty good, too. The pride of the gate. Pass without trace. We hardly ever use that. I'm gonna give that to Will. Sharp as ever. There you go. No time to rest. And I'm wrong. What? I have information on the night song. I want to speak to Lor Loricon. Be very sure before you make to visit the Rubicon. The Rubicon. He's got a beastly temper. But if you really do know something, he'll want to see you. Head upstairs. You can find a way into his tower up there. Okay. Mind my step. Before we do that, let's take a look around. Look, a bookseller. She can point us at a tome I need. Where is the famous Loroican? His shop is a nut of shambles. There's not much left. Looks like folks heard the absolute was on the march and bought everything that wasn't nailed down. Yep, panic buying. Alright, so where's this, uh... Is that the bookseller over there? Oh, one moment. I'm trying to work out how many pinches of mud wall is equivalent to one of Mother's Leaf. You might want to be really should have planted that herb garden, you know. Ah, oh, well, it's too late for that now, isn't it? Would you mind if I finished browsing before you muscle in, please? I was here first, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. Hello. Literature department. Can I help you? Yeah, why are you whispering? Why are you whispering? Sensitive. They prefer an environment of quiet reverence. Hmm. I'm trying to find out about a particular Netherese crown. Have you anything on that subject? I'd be interested in any any especially rare tomes you might have. Or I can scream it. Is that true? Books, are you sensitive? What do you have on offer? 
Uh, I want to see super rare things. <laughs> Bold. You might have heard that our library has a collection other shops would lack the skill to curate. Between us, even Master Lorokin was reluctant to house them in his tower. The pen is mightier than the magic wand, apparently. <laughs> Funny. They're locked away here for their and our customers' safety. Our finest reserve includes the Tharkia Codex, the Annals of Cassis and Netherese Folly, Sites of the Sea, and the Curriculum of Strategy. Do any of those interest you? Yes. All of them, actually. But definitely, first off, the Annals of Carsis. It is said to be written by Lord Carsis himself, the Netherese Arcanist who attempted to replace the goddess Mistra. Failed and was banished for the attempt. Great magical knowledge lies within those pages, but not many can withstand it. That's it. That's what I need. Don't look so suspicious, man. The Carsus would no doubt have much to say about the crown's true nature. If only you could read them. Sounds perfect. How much for me to buy it from you? Buy? Books as temperamental as these are not on sale. They are secured in our vault, where none can harm them. Nor can they do any harm. Consider yourself lucky to have learned of such a book's existence, and then forget about it. The annals of Carsus are best left unread. Surely there's some amount of gold that can convince you to part with it. I came here all the way from Neverwinter to admire your collection. Couldn't I just peek in the vault? Unless you want a very nasty paper cut, you're going to tell me how to get into that vault. Isn't it your job to share knowledge, not keep it locked away? At least tell me where the vault is. Persuader. I don't really want to buy. Ooh. Shoot. Nah, we don't need to cast advantage. We should be fine. There we go. Customers like you are why I prefer the company of books. The only way to gain access to the vault is through my office. And before you ask, no, you are not allowed in there either. Surely there's some amount of gold. Psst. I already told you. It is locked in our vault. And with good reason. Imagine if a tome so dangerous was sold to someone with such poor comprehension. Thank you. I've learned more than enough. <laughs> you certainly have. Even simple knowledge of these tones is enough to stimulate most. Hmm, okay. So you gotta get into her office. This is hardly the time for idle banter. The animals of Carsus are here, waiting to be read. Well, I mean, we gotta get there first, buddy. Okay. Why is there a corpse over here? What the hell? Apologies. I'm with a customer at the moment. Okay. Do you think that zombie looks fresh? Is fresh good? I never know with zombies. I don't. I guess it depends on what you're talking about. All right. Oh hi. Welcome, dear patron, to the floor at the top of the stairs. If you have information about the night song, great riches await. If you are here to waste the great wizard Laroakin's time, reconsider. Let your knowledge determine your path forward. 
Oh. Um, can't we just like talk normally? Welcome back, dear patron. Remember that the great wizard doesn't suffer fools who waste his time. Let your knowledge determine your path forward. Okay. The night song is an immortal being, the child of a deity. The night song is a priceless ruby from a realm beyond our own. I guess we already know which one it is, but... The night song is an ancient potion that allows its drinker to become irresistibly attractive to man and god alone. Mm. The night song is a druidic staff that allows its bearer command over an army of ancient beasts. Hmm. Oh wow, you're really... You've really got your eyes on us, huh? But not over here. Save it. The longest save ever. Okay, there we go. What? Lockpick. Come on, big roll, big roll. Oh, come on. There we go. In we go. You've wandered into a forbidden area. You sense it might be time to leave. So I move myself immediately. Okay. We'll go back there later. Let's go through this portal. I would never. Uh, 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 uh. Hold very still, Nicola. Uh, Crank's aim is much improved, but uh, still leave something up to chance. Yes, sir. All right, Crank. Ready? Aim. Uh. Oh. We have a visitor. You do. At ease. McClaw, you may go. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> I see no night song. Uh, surely you wouldn't have entered my tower without the night song in hand. Surely you wouldn't have wasted my time. I'm not... Not quite the enthusiastic welcome I was hoping for. What do you want with her? You must be the wizard of the world. You. What do you want with her? Huh. Fascinating. You've been to Shah's temple, haven't you? To the Shadowfell? Yep. I have. It's none of your business. You speak as though you've seen Night Song yourself. Yeah, you've seen her before. Uh, alas, I've paid for a good deal of very privileged information. Now I await the results of the generous contract I've commissioned. Answer now, or see what happens when fools misuse my valuable time. Be careful what you wish for. She'll eat you alive. Why do you want her so badly? I know where she is. I might even be willing to tell you. I regret to inform you the Night Song is no more. Killed in the Sharon Temple once where she had where she was held. I've seen her. 
She was trapped by Catherick Thorne. I left her there. Get out of my face now. I know nothing. I swear it. Why do you want her so badly? I'm growing tired of this repartee, my friend. Let us cut to the chase. Beautiful, isn't it? Worth more than your life, too. I bought it from a Kalashite warlock. There's very little of his soul left to him. Hmm. It can bind a celestial to the wearer's service with a snap of the fingers. And this? This can keep her in place. Forever. I'll tell her to come here. Just to give her the satisfaction of ripping you to shreds. And where she is, I may be willing to tell you. Um, I consider your request. Binding a night song forever. How unoriginal. Need I recite the tale of Catholic Thorn? We're gonna go with that one. It didn't work out for poor Catholic, did it? He was a fool. A desperate mercenary who... Hold out his soul to whichever god flattered him. <laughs> I serve no god, but that which stares back at me in the mirror. The night song will be put to a grand purpose, equalizing man and god. Whoever helps me attain that which I seek will be greatly rewarded. Hmm. There's more to divinity than lifespan. And staring an immortal won't make you a god. Equalizing man and god? Quite the lofty ambition. I've always dreamt of immortality. Your plan is quite clever. I'll go fetch her. Um. And staring an immortal won't make you a god. Of course not. But perhaps, after enough lifetimes, I might make a start of it. Hmm. Mm. So I think we're going to try and deceive him. Hmm. I don't know which one I like more. Do we try and convince him that he, she died? I mean... She's immortal, right? So I don't know if he'd believe that. I feel like that'd be harder. So just saying I left her there could be better. I've seen her. She was trapped by Catholic Thorn. I left her there. And we're gonna cast advantage on him. Didn't really need it, but... you imbecile or it will cost you a world of riches so vast you cannot even comprehend the loss you can go now before i lose my temper hmm that way okay so we're gonna have to do something about this huh Nice balcony, though. Oh, my God. Look at that. Wow. Not quite the view, my friend. Look at that. And that's not clouds, right? That's probably, like, chimney smoke. All oh, this. That's a nice touch. Really cool. Really cool. I do remember this place from the first game, but it wasn't as, um, obviously not as, uh, you know, 3D, I don't know, HD. Alright, hopefully this guard has moved his head away again. Maybe we'll have, like, somebody talk to him and that'll turn his head. Yeah, we might, we're gonna have to do that. Alright, Will. We're gonna have to do this. Shut up, honey. 
Character select. Oh, good. Two steps at a time. I don't know what we said. Something. Where's our dialogue box? Is that over here? Shadow needs to speak to her more than I do. Better wait until she is free. Weird. Okay. Still breathing, despite everything. I can't close the door. There we go. There we go. All right. Light on my feet. The weave. A note from Vompter. Okay. We'll read this one first. Miklar. As you refuse to speak to me following the incident with the three-eyed man, I have no choice but to make my request in writing. Master Lo... Lo Laroakan instructs you to bring his newly acquired lamp, the one with the jin, with the jinn, to the vault and store it behind the protective wall. It is far too dangerous to be left on display in the shop proper. Rompter. Miklar. Master Laroakan Laroakan I don't know why that name is so hard for me. Has requested his tome of divination spells be brought to the basement. He must focus without interruption in order to see the unseen. Since you refused to speak to me since the incident with the ape, I have no choice but to make my request in writing. Bompter. Sorcerer Sundry's basement chess key. Alright, there's a clasped book. There we go. And through the portal. Hold on, what's this? Adventurers wanted for perilous and profitable quest. Master Lerorakan, the arcanist of Athkatla, the recluse of Remesis Tower, seeks brave and, and enterprising individuals to delve treacherous temple and recover storied artifact the Night Song for preservation in Baldur's Gate. Only a start of heart and keen of mind need apply. Fame, glory, and incredible fortune assured. According to standard wisdom, the weave is comp comprised of the body of Mistra, or the domain of Mistrail, the thread, the threads connecting all of creation to the source of magic itself. I posit to the inter intrepid reader that the truth is far more fascinating. The weave, as we know it, is not invisible at all. No, certain among us, whom I call seers, can sense the true nature of the weave as an incredibly fine but highly physical and edi edible substance left in our realm by space-faring giants called Immortums several eons ago. Each time we wield this power, creatures called Weave Devils consume these strands of weave, and their excitement is a powerful force we call magic. I know this will shock many readers, but I only deliver the facts as I know them, and as the esteemed wizarding community wants to keep them from you. Or wants to keep from you. I believe him. I believe him. Alright, through the portal. Sorceress Vault. Okay. Posted scroll here. Madam, it's no secret that yours is the finest collection of records within our fair city. This scroll brings you a query, I believe... Only you can resolve. It has been a long-held bit of lore. What is this? Oh, that's... I. For some reason, I thought this dialogue box down here just popped up, but that's the combat log. Never mind. It has been a long-held bit of lore within my family that we are descendants of Larel Silverhand, though... Or through my mother's line. Though no existing genealogy can confirm our claim. Would you be so kind as to investigate the matter? It would mean a great deal to my grandmother, uh, Haverfoss, who is poorly who is poorly at the minute. The family name is Greydell. Hopefully yours, Amber Lehman. Miklar's Ledger. Okay. 
What else we got around here? Mm, what's that? A button. There we go. Okay. It's in these metal chests. Definitely take all that. Storage and sorting of scroll work, parchment, and tomes. Okay. Well, what's this way? Hmm. I can fly, right? Wait, can I just walk over that? Pick all that. Oh yeah, we can. Next door. Red Knight's final stratagem. What's in here? And a gilded chest here. Take all that stuff. This vault is kind of light on the gold. There's a little bit more. Encumbered. Blast it. It's all this damn money. We're going to split this and send all you to camp. There we go. Save me a little bit of money. We're going to split this. 15 to you. There is work to do. Okay, you already have some, so give them to you then. There you go. No one stopped me yet. Go and lock pick this. For some reason, this feels familiar. The Red Knight's final stratagem. Have we run into the Red Knight before? Before her time as an exarch of Tempest and goddess of strategy, the Red Knight was a paladin most devout. She toured armies the world over as both student and teacher, and thus was she elevated to Tempest to her by Tempest to her current status. These pages contain that of which was left of the on the material plane after her ascension. Quite some valuable knowledge hidden between these pages. Scroll of Artistry of War. 12d6 plus 6 force damage. Summon the apparitions of six master strategists. Each appar apparition strikes a target of your choosing, dealing 8 to 18 force damage on a hit. Nice. Can I take it too? Yep. The guy's kind of an ass, so I don't mind stealing from him. Alright, unlock this chest. Bet I can crack that open. Take all those and open this one. Excuse me. Take that. What is this plaque say? Restricted area. No entry to vaults. Trespassers will be disintegrated. Master Laroican. That's not good. I don't want to be disintegrated. Door 
is named after a wizard, so the one named after Cassis must conceal his annals. Oh no, it sounds kind of too... Too, too much of a thing. Too easy. We want to go through all of them anyway, don't we? We sure do. Disarm these. Well, this one's Karsis, so I guess we'll go through this one first. Lockpicking impossible. Oh, do we have to go through each one of them? First, I guess we'll go through Silverhand first. Hmm. I don't like it. It's reminding me of that one place. Um. The one like tower place in Baldur's Gate 2 Enhanced Edition. Where like there's a portal to the uh, abyss of the demon world. And each door like leads you to a different spot. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you guys, you guys get it. Okay, well we want evocation. Although it seems like that's not leading us the way we want to go. Click. Wish revealed. Foresight. Invulnerability. Gate. Guess we go with wish. dangerous place. I wonder if that lever will, um, turn the traps off. It does. Awesome. Unlock here by the path to the Elminster Vault. Huh. Okay. Alright. Elminster Vault has been unlocked. And then we want to go to Foresight. Okay. Elminster Vault. Okay. Got a gilded chest. Take it all. Damaged Voss. Vase. Vaz. Take all that stuff. We'll get that one last. Pyro Quickness Hat. When you deal fire damage with a leveled spell, you burn yourself and gain an additional bonus action this round. Interesting. Get that the Gale. Money. Alright, some sort of codex. Hey, that was bad. Go ahead and give his guidance, too. Here we go. Critical success. The pages are covered in esoteric symbols and strange runes some indecipherable but some strangely familiar your eyes are drawn to one page describing a long lost book the necromancy of Thay. there are secrets of life and death known only to the red wizards committing such secrets to parchment is a risk they are loath to take lest the unworthy gaze upon them who better then to guard their secrets than the spirits of the jealous dead themselves to look upon the necromancy of Thay is to risk madness at the hands of its spirits. But the wise traveler, who can tread the line between life and death, will find knowledge witnessed by precious few mortals. The rest of the entry details 
the precautions and risks associated with regarding the text, but lays out a clear path to unraveling the secrets contained in this tome. I've been cursed. Hmm. I will take that. Yeah, I thought I had the book. Now that we have the codex, I wonder if we can just like You feel its connection. It's longing to be opened. To share its secrets. I can know how to use it now, right? You open the book where you left off, and the voices return, chiding you for your indecision. Use your hand to turn another page. I was kind of hoping... Oh, I thought that was... Um... Oh, we have to roll pretty high. Might as well use it. There we go. With strange runes, you see time rewritten, fate undone, your future thrumming with power. The book snaps closed. You've seen too much. What profane knowledge is now seared inside of you, you should never have known. What do I get? Nothing? Oh, okay. Well. How do I get rid of this curse? At the None of you have removed curse, do you? I think I got it on somebody, but... Really do this. For now. Whatever comes, I'm ready. I don't remember who. These things have stayed oh, interesting. Well. What is it doing to me again? Oh, my constitution score sucks. Ah, I was dying quickly anyway. No big deal. I was kind of hoping it would give me more to do with that book, but... Can I open it up again? The book radiates power, but the words you read in the codex echo in your oh. mind. Guiding your eyes safely across the page. The once indecipherable glyphs now feel dangerously familiar. Promising unholy power to those who can take it. Read and wrest the book's power from it. Big roll, big roll. Damn it. I have inspiration, I have inspiration. I'm gonna use all the inspiration if I have to. You just gotta roll a 17 to be sure. There we go. As you pass the strange glyphs, you can feel the book resisting. Ghostly voices whisper at you from the dark, probing and fighting your mind. But your will is iron, and you brush past these shades of the past. Devouring every secret the book has to offer. You see now life and death are malleable as clay to be bent and reshaped by your will, by your power. But as you close the book, a nagging doubt whispers in your mind. What consequences will there be for calling the dead from their rest? Complete three new journal updates available. I feel like that was a warning specifically directed at, um, at you guys who wanted to create a, uh, an undead workforce, you know, de careful, careful dealing with the undead guys, all right? It's not, they're not good. It's evil. Don't be evil. Oren told us not to underestimate Gortash's steel watch. She mentioned that they come from the lower city. 
we should find where they are made. Yeah, we do need to do that. Orin rest Orin abducted Lazal. She told us that she'll release her if we kill Gortash. We saved Cora Highberry, right? Right. Wants us to bring Night and so Night Song to him. Help the Hag survivors. Githinki warrior Kithrak boss has left to gather his allies, and must find a way to enter the artifact. Jahira wants to speak with Nine Fingers Keen, leader of the criminal guild. She believes the guildmaster might have a lead on how to find her old friend Minsk. Find oh yeah, we found a note. Okay, yeah, we gotta do that. There we go. Okay. So now we have to get through to Karsus's thing. Which seems to be transmutation. Okay, I see. So, evocation was led us to Elminster. So we're gonna go illusion. Or abjuration. Yeah, okay. So we wanna go illusion. Oh, uh, we mean ab abjuration. Oh god. Watch how you go. Everybody okay? I was looking for the uh the lever. We found it. Just had to get a couple more shots in on me, huh? Okay. Go ahead and disarm this trap. Path to the castle's vault. There we go. I guess we want to go through the demon door to get back out of here. Carsis is open. The Carsis vault. Okay, whole bunch of stuff in here. Foe breaker. Lethal weapon. This weapon ignores bludgeoning resistance. It's a maul. That's cool. Longsword. Halberd. Why don't you go ahead and pick those up for me? Great sword plus one, but that's not green. Interesting. I'll go this way. Got a glaive over here and a great axe. Still alive, so that's progress. Diamond, malice, psychic resistance. Oh, that's Christ. very good stuff. Got some scrolls. Scroll of flight. That's useful. More scrolls of flight. Scroll the chain lightning. Magus be warned. It is a great paradox among our kind, who so value the art of learning, that we believe ourselves ever cannier than the ones who came before. If envy is the disease of the artist, hubris is that of the wizard. Though I fear my warning will fall on deaf ears, I will say it again. The closer a wizard creeps to the domain of the divine, the closer oblivion creeps with him with him. I thought myself an equal to Mistra, and devised a plan to make myself her equal. I would pluck one strand of weave and contain it within an amulet. I spent the better portion of my years devising. How I regret instantly how regret instantly heaved itself upon my head. I was trapped within the amulet instantaneously, and passed around from collector to curio hall for the better part of a millennium. Only now that I am freed with barely the strength to hold my quill. Can I leave this final warning as testimony? I'll take that. The gold chalice I will also take. Got the scroll of dethrone. 
What does that do? Whoa! 10d6 plus 20 necrotic. Shred a foe's very essence by pulling on a strand of the weave. Damn. And then we have the Annals of Carsis. Let's save it. The Annals of Carsis. The preamble to a civilization's downfall, committed to parchment by the very hand that wrought its destruction. If the crown atop the Elder Brain was truly forged by Carsis himself, this book will confirm it. All we have to do is turn the page. I'm not sure I want you delving into this. I'll give him the book. I trust him. It's a beautiful book. That devil Raphael was telling the truth. There's no doubt. The crown of Carsus is what's controlling the Elder a quick read. And this... This is no mere journal. It contains Carsus' original plans for the crown's construction. His designs for godhood. The design for self-destruction, more like. Didn't this crown kill Carsus? Godhood. I know crowns are an ego boost, but that's ridiculous. A design you could follow? Stay silent. Didn't the crown kill Carsus? Not exactly. It was what he did with it that sealed his fate, and for a time, that of magic itself. The crown was merely the means. The book states that the crown and nether stones were originally one construct, seemingly sundered at the moment of Carthus's downfall. If we can collect the crown setting and the three nether stones, and with the correct invocation of certain spells and gestures detailed in these notes, I think I could reforge it. Aren't you forgetting something? We have to hand the crown to Raphael. To what end? We already know the crown's dangerous. Wouldn't that make things worse? You think? What happens if you fail? That crown caused chaos. We should be seeking a way to destroy it, not make it more powerful. To what end? To every end you can imagine. And a thousand more beyond. Gale. Just think of it. The power of the gods in mortal hands at last. Would be free of doctrine and dogma, confined only by the limits of our imaginations. I promise you, the gods will never grant us such a blessing, no matter how much we worship and adore them. You dismiss the entire pantheon so easily. Not all gods are selfish. And you think Mistra will let you do this? Mortals are far more. Mortar, mortals are far better gu guardians of their fates than the gods. We have more to lose. You think Mistra will let you do this? I don't know. Ao does not look kindly on gods meddling in mortal affairs. She may have no choice but to stand by and let events unfold. Even with the fate of the world at stake, she had little more to offer me than the means of blowing myself up at a more convenient time. She's done nothing to help us. Mistra wanted the brain obliterated because of this crown. She fears a world in which such power is beyond her control, ready to be claimed by Carthus's successor. You? I thought you were past this kind of temptation, Gale. You know exactly where such overreaching leads. Or to destroy the next wizard who attempts it. The attempt would kill you as it killed Carthus, and you believe yourself to be that successor. This is no ordinary artifact, Gale. Do this, and you challenge the gods themselves. So you want the crown to settle his score with Mistra? You believe yourself to be that su successor? Not until this moment. But I can't help beginning to see such a destiny unfold before me. Powerful as he was, Carthus lacks some advantages I can lay claim to. I know Mistra. Intimately. And I carry a fragment of the weave itself within my body. Cast has achieved many things. Hmm. But he never managed that. A long road lies ahead before the crown comes into our possession. All I ask for now is that you do not dismiss this possibility out of hand. Please. At least think on it. Gale, I'm urging you to drop this. 
This crown cannot be reforged. <coughs> Seems like you've got this all figured out. I won't stand in your way. You're a convincing man, Gale. The crown sounds promising. I'm urging you to drop this. I see. I suppose I am asking you to take a leap of faith. Even the most loyal of companions might struggle to land gracefully. It's been so long feeling... inferior. Shut out from my destiny over such a simple act of youthful enthusiasm. Perhaps I got carried away with the thought this crown could give me back what Mistra took. Cure me. Even. You're still destined for greatness, Gale. But you won't find it chasing Karsus's shadow. Don't give up yet. There will be an answer. It just isn't the crown. You're deluded, Gale. The crown is clearly dangerous, as is pursuing it. I promise to think about it then. That's all I can offer you. You're still destined for greatness. You're right. There aren't many wizards who'd care to be mentioned in the same breath as him or his folly. Whatever comes of this, we cannot allow the crown to be reforged in Raphael's image. That's true. A devil wielding the might of Cassus. It would be the end of everything. Well, we better find a way into the House of Hopes, huh? All right, we also... Oh, did we get a second one of these? We read the Annals, Annals of Carsis. And I received the Annals of Carsis. All right. Well, that was pretty... That went pretty well, really. The vault. No fighting, nothing. Yeah. I mean, a few traps, but... Nothing, nothing too bad. Let's go ahead and get out of here. And then we'll uh, end the episode. Not enough money, though, in his vault. Where's all his money at? Alright. That's going to be it for this episode, guys. In the next episode, we'll continue on to the next quest, I guess. We've got... We could keep going south and investigate the fireworks here. That's for the suspicious toys. Get that out of the way. And a murder target and hag, hag survivors. So we'll start doing some of that stuff in the next episode. Until then, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll catch you later.